Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. Uh, so first of all, I would like to apologize for, apologize for my sore throat. Um, yesterday it was an epic game between Croatia and Denmark at the World Cup. Uh, it was uh, full of stress and full of yelling and screaming and uh, that, yeah, this is just uh, uh, the consequences. So sorry for that, but still I will try to make it out in this video. Uh, today I've prepared a game between Bobby Fischer and Wolfgang Onziker. It is a game from the 1959 Zurich tournament and once again we will see why Fischer is considered to be such a talent uh, because the game and, and the course of the game where he takes it is just amazing. Uh, Wolfgang Onziker, I already shown one game on this channel by him. It was a game against Paul Keres. Keres also showed and a brilliant attack. But uh, I talked about Wolfgang Unziker there, uh, he is uh, proclaimed to be the world chess amateur champion, so wasn't considered to be one of the elite, but still a pretty good chess player. So let me show you the game. Actually, this game was also uh, listed in the Fisher's book, my, my memorable games, under the name Milking the Cow. So quite a, quite a funny and strange name. I know it's a common phrase, but uh, I actually didn't see uh, see it in this game. I actually took uh, took another point of view and uh, my opinion of this game is kind of different but I will also let you to be the judge of that. So is Fischer milking the cow in this game or not? Uh, okay we started with the game uh, e4 e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 bishop to b5 of course Rui Lopez when Fischer plays it after against e5 and we have bishop to e4 now. Knight to f6 Pretty standard stuff for the opening, uh, this line is, uh, so the close variation on Rui Lopez is a pretty familiar one and it goes on for about 15 moves, which where pretty much all the moves are standard. So I will quickly go through it, rook to e1, defending the pawn, b5, attacking the bishop, bishop to b3, d6, not going for the martial attack, we have c3, castles, h3 not allowing bishop to come to g4, knight to a5 attacking the bishop, bishop to c2, c5, d4, so both of the players strike in the center, queen to c7, waiting for the rook to come to d8, if the uh, file opens up, knight from b to d2, and uh, we have now bishop to d7, black completing the development, uh, fisher going for knight f1, knight to e3, knight f5 ideas, Rook from ft8 and now knight to e3. g6 stopping knight to f5. And now Fischer is the one who breaks the tension in the center with a move. Pawn captures on e5. Pawn captures on e5 and now the main idea knight to h2. So he goes for the knight g4 changes. First rook from a to d8. Uh, so oh, putting it on the open file. Queen has to move. Queen to f3. Uh, we have bishop to e6. Six and now knight from h to g4 going for the attack in the knight. Knight has to capture and now pawn captures. So the first moment in the game where we can stop a little bit and uh, uh, analyze it. The thing is, uh, Fisher did create a, a doubled pawn, but uh, you cannot expect that uh, this pawn will be doubled for much longer because it will be used definitely in the attack, which Fisher will. Uh, show quite soon and um, so just because of that you shouldn't be afraid if knight captures I mean it is also a fine move nothing bad there but uh, here Fisher wanted to go for I would say more attacking chances it's not like he wants to play g3 king to g2 and open on open the, the fire on the h file um, he, mo he wants to use this pawn as a, as a anchor here on g5 to maybe attack with the knight on h6 and f6 but okay, you will see that very soon. We see queen to c6 and now Fischer maybe could have played b3 to kind of stop knight to c4 ideas, even though knight to c4 could have been played immediately instead of queen to c6, but he decided to go immediately for g5. And g5 uh, is a move where which tempts black to capture the pawn, but it doesn't give him a good game. After bishop to g5, there is this knight to d5, the bishop is attacked, and... Uh, if you move the bishop back, then quite simply knight captures, rook captures, and queen to f6 attacks the rook. Bishop to h6 is the next next move with threatening checkmate. Black is completely lost in this position. So here, it is not good to bring back the bishop, but also capturing with the bishop, the knight, it is also not good because bishop to g5, the rook is attacked, and 
the bishop is still attacked so black will lose at least an exchange here the best move that you can make is rook captures on d5 and here black goes into the series of exchanges after bishop to e4 uh, just exchanging everything and going into a game end game where uh, there are uh, he has two pawns uh, for the pro price of the exchange and if uh, Onzikar was ready to play something like, like that he could but uh, he decided not to so he didn't go for bishop to g5 uh, and he played knight to c4 but Fisher isn't interested in trading knights he wants to take one of the bishops so that the, he is the one with the bishop pair so knight to g4 practically forcing black to capture it queen to g4 and now the move that I had a problem with and uh, the move why I think that uh, milking the cow isn't an appropriate title for this game is f6 here. So uh, in my opinion a complete um, disastrous positional move here from Unziker opens up the king doesn't really accomplish anything uh, it doesn't seem that this pawn on g5 at the moment poses any threat uh, here, uh, black could have just simply continued with rook to d7, rook to d8, doubling the rooks, uh, maybe playing the knight back, uh, going for some, I don't know, other ideas, definitely, especially on the d file. And, uh, but uh, here, yeah, Unziker decided to play f6, not sure what is the reason, but uh, Fischer jumped at the chance to just capture the pawn, and after bishop captures on f6, of course, uh, when we look at this position now, it doesn't seem that that there is some great advantage on white side. Of course, there is the bishop pair, but uh, other than that, uh, the things aren't clear enough yet. But if you look at the bigger picture, uh, if you look at a potential endgame and the position that could occur, definitely here, white does have better chances. So uh, the main reason is this king is isn't i wouldn't say wide open but open enough to for him to come under attack and you will see how fisher uh, at such a young age exploits that and uh, just marvelously goes for the better end game first a4 so open up the position now it's the right time knight goes back to a and b6 pawn captures and pawn captures now we have bishop to e3 since knight is not on c4 anymore and rook to a8 rook to d1 from e to d1 so if rook captures on a1 uh, Fisher will have the a file but here he also has the d file putting the rooks on open files king to h8 and b3 stopping knight to c4 completely and limiting this knight for being on this side of the board bishop to g7 so black brings the pieces into the corner and now we see queen to h4 bishop back to f6 and Fisher goes for the exchange of the bishops. Bishop to g5, bishop captures, queen captures, rook captures on a1, and rook captures on a1. So now, after all this, the things have uh, kind of, yeah, uh, simplified. So uh, now it's time to uh, find the best move in the position. Here, uh, black played knight to d7, and judging by the position of white, uh, which is the one that kind of holds attention because... Uh, as I said, the queen is quite near to the king. There are some attacking chances. The question is, what is the best thing to do here? Uh, the queen is, uh, I would say, perfectly placed here, very close to the to the king, making some threats, attacking the pawns. Uh, the rook is on the open file, which is always good. The only piece that uh, could be considered not so good is the bishop. Because the bishop, okay, he does the important job of defending the pawn, but still, that is uh, the lim limiting the bishop on uh, this sole purpose. It's uh, it's not that good of an idea, especially if you play chess. So it is time to maybe play a bishop to a much better square. And Fisher just does that. He plays bishop to d1, which. Uh, uh, when you first look at it, kind of leaves this pawn undefended. But if queen captures on e4, bishop to f3 is coming, and black is kind of forced to play queen to f4 or queen to f5, go for the queen exchange. If he goes queen to c2, then a rook to a7 simply kills uh, black, black's chances to continue the game. This knight is attacked. There is not a good way how to defend it. And uh, if the knight moves, then queen to f6, follow, and checkmate is coming soon. So um, this is the problem for black. And if you go exchange queens, for example, like this, bishop to c6, once again, kills black immediately. 
uh, the knight is attacked and wherever you defend it the rook will pin the knight and still you will lose it being a piece down uh, in this endgame is quite terrible for black so this is why of course queen didn't capture on e4 but we saw knight to f6 bring another attacker on e4 but fisher doesn't mind he plays the active moves rook to a7 now still the this cannot be captured especially now with the queen because queen to f6 and if knight captures then queen to h6 threat is queen to h7 checkmate queen to g7 checkmate and you cannot stop both so checkmate in two is following and fisher knows it so this is why once again this pawn cannot be captured here unziker played queen to d6 attack the bishop bishop moved to e2 and um, black was kind of forced to exchange the rooks he didn't have time to actually go back to defend the pawn, and because of that rook to e7 rook to e7 queen to e7 bishop to b5 fisher is entering an endgame where he is a pawn up and uh, for a player okay he was 16 year old but already at that age he was quite a uh, quite a good endgame player and uh, there was no problem of him uh, just killing it in this endgame and uh, i will now show you his uh, flawless i would say flawless technique king to g7 bishop back to e2 of course moving out of the pawn's way so that you can push them queen to c7 and queen to e3 now you have to defend the pawn queen to a5 and now g3 a very common idea which i would like you to remember in the end game you would like to move the king from the first rank or in black's case from the eighth rank to maybe avoid some checks if the queen is involved of course some checks and uh, capturing of pieces with tempo so g3 and kick to g2 a very good idea queen to a3 king to g2 and as you can see fisher isn't afraid of queen to b3 because of queen to c5 and now he is also attacking this pawn so after knight to e4 queen e5 knight to f6 white is just pushing the pawn so c4 and uh, this pawn will be unstoppable black is once again in a bad position having this king open up so this is why uh in multiple occasions this f6 move was kind of kind of a, a big blunder uh positional blunder for black so because of that king to g2 queen just uh, was played back to a5 and this proves the thing that Unziker doesn't really have an idea how to approach this position, it is on Fisher to actually go and finish this game. Queen to d3, queen goes to b6, and now queen to c4 defends the pawn. We have queen to c6, bishop to d3 defending this pawn, queen back to b6, and now b4. Starting to push the pawns, pawn captures, pawn captures. And now one last try, knight to g4, threatening queen to f2. But now Fisher can play queen to c5, force the queen exchange. Queen captures, pawn captures, and now king to f7. And uh, once again, now you will see how to play this endgame where you have a pawn and a bishop against a knight. First, remove the threats. f4, the pawn on f2 was uh, attacked. King to e7, so it is not over yet because the king is in the square, obviously, so it is not enough to push the pawn because the knight is on the other side of the board. You still have to include your king into the game. We have king to f3, knight goes to f6, and now bishop to b5. And as you can see, all of these squares are taken by the pawns and the bishop. A beautiful communication between the pawns and the bishop uh, doesn't allow the king to come closer. And also this move with the bishop limits the knight to actually come closer on this side. Fisher will definitely enjoy capturing and exchanging the bishop for the knight because having a pawn endgame with a pawn up is quite indeed an easy win. So, king to e6. We have now bishop to c4, king has to go back to e7 and now quite simply c6. And here, as you can see, black is quite quite finished. If you play king to d6, then pawn captures. If you capture the pawn, c7, c8 is unstoppable. And if you capture this pawn, then you lose the knight and the game. So here, knight to e8 needs to be played and pawn captures on e5. White has won yet another pawn. h6 stopping the king to come closer but fisher goes on the other side king to e3 knight to c7 and king to d4 now h5 here fisher could have gone uh, this way threatened to yeah attack the knight and then push this pawn but he chose to go this way so go back and pick up these pawns g5 bishop to e2 forces h4 h4 pawn captures pawn captures and now bishop back to c4 you can capture this pawn but you shouldn't allow the king to come closer to pick up this pawn so very important knight to e8 king to f4 and king to d8 
king to g4, king to c7, and now the final beauty, which is bishop to f7. And uh, you will see the idea uh, very soon. So this knight doesn't have a move. The only move where, where the only square that he can go to is g7, and now even king to h4, allowing black to capture this pawn, because quite simply here Fisher plays king to g5 in this position. Unzikir resigned the game because uh, the knight doesn't have a square to go to, and uh, the next move will be king to f6, king to g7. Black doesn't have time to pick up. Uh, all the pawns. So king to d4, king to g7. You can pick up this pawn or this pawn, but whatever happens uh, in the situation, having this endgame, it is quite clear that white can easily promote to a queen. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much it for this video and this game. Uh, once again, I would uh, like to uh, for you to pay attention to this f6 move. So thinking about uh, the positional mistake that Unziker made and uh, quite clearly showing the, the difference between uh, a Grandmaster's level player and uh, a player who isn't a Grandmaster level. Such small uh, things that can occur in, in this situation. So just looking for that little thing that can maybe be used in the end game or in it for some attacking chances in the future is quite enough for a strong player to go for it. And Fisher clearly shows that uh, having that advantage here in this situation did prove to be a winning chance because he did in win and in, did win in the, the game in the end. So yeah, without uh, yeah, making this video any longer. Uh, this is pretty much it. I will, of course, show a couple of more games from this Zurich tournament because it was really fun and uh, Fisher played uh, quite a few good games. Yeah, that being said, I would like to thank you for, thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.